What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Swolecast. Listen, we have a lot of stuff to talk about. Free agency has just been going nuts. No one's really talking about the fantasy implications of this and, and what offenses we're really liking. So that's what we're going to dig into on today's show. A lot of people are on spring break, uh, and we got you covered for that uh, long trip to the beach. Just stick around. It's the Swolecast here at Rudergrinders.com. You can be static from the full cap. I was like, yep, that's me. I just want you guys to know I'm total dust. I'm the problem. Hear ye, hear ye. Leave it to the guy with the crypto dunes, Abby, to not understand content. <laughs> I should have known you getting 30 likes was directly written by someone else. <laughs> you know me. I don't do a, a ton of research before the show. I put no research into this. Don't know if it's true at all. You're on the right, right show. To it, bro. Live a little. <laughs> live a little. Just live a little, guys. <laughs> All right, welcome in. Uh, Tuttle is grinding uh, mid-major conference. Someone's got to do it. I don't know. He said someone can fill in for me, which was basically him saying I'm not going to be on today's show. So uh, I don't know why he wouldn't want to be on today's show. There's a lot to talk about uh, and just want to get it out of the way. Hear ye, hear ye, is Derrick Henry a Titan, quote the Raven, nevermore. So um, I'm, I'm sad. I'm sad, but also not shocked and wish him well. I was shocked about Tony Pollard, which we could talk about in a second. But uh, you know, when I was Will on Will you the, be rooting for him? Yeah. Will you be rooting for Henry as a Raven? 100%. Okay. And I know that kind of goes against the Titans ethos, but that's how much I love the man. I mean, are you still going to be a Titans fan? Like Titans yeah, versus Ravens first sure. round of the yeah, playoffs. I'm, I'm still going to be cheering for the Titans. Davis, now everyone's like you. They just jump ship whenever they're, uh, you know, <laughs> well, I, team I've they been, want. So I've been thinking about this recently, um, you know, because Speaking time waits. Team. Well, no, time just <laughs> waits for no man. You know, um, Patrick Mahomes is, is going to be 29 this season. Um, there will be a time in my life where the Kansas City Chiefs exist without Patrick Mahomes, and will that's, I that's love Patriots fans? <laughs> that so, like, I, I like unironically, I'm like, if I was in Rudman's position, <laughs> would I still be a Patriots fan? And I, I don't honestly do not have the answer to that question. I, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like it would be so hard to know. That's why Rudman is so much more true of a fan. He's out here posting mock drafts into the sixth rounds of guys he wants the Patriots. Uh, Rudman, to Rudman is like he's like he's like responding to like everything, being like, "Dude, I hope we don't give Jacoby Brissett too much money." Like he he like that's a real like, fan. It's true, it's true. He's a real fan. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, as far as like free agency moves, like has every season kind of been like this? Because it feels like this season has been different. With like no, I mean skill position players, um, especially the running the, back class. It's the, I mean, it's the it's a it's a combination of a really good wide receiver draft class and a really bad running back draft class. So it, yeah. it's like in terms of like us fantasy guys, it's just gonna it's gonna be like an optimal amount of movement. And there's you know all the quarterback stuff, and we got Kirk Cousins to the new team. I, I and one of the PFF guys tweeted this yesterday that like um, of their top 101 free agents, I think as of right now, there's only 31 that don't have a contract right now. So it was like a ridiculous amount of player movement in the first 48 hours. You, that, it's not it's not an exaggeration. Uh, Ru- yeah, feels, go ahead. It just feels like a unique year, I think specifically because of the running backs and yeah. both like the dynamics of all of these formerly great running backs kind of like aging out of their contracts and basically the league playing musical chairs with them. Like none of these guys are coming off of really massive efficient seasons. And they're like, Hey, what if Joe Mixon on the Texans is better than Joe Mixon on, on the, uh, on the Bengals. And they've just all shifted teams. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's just get, and also people that are, are watching, we appreciate you. Uh, again, we're breaking it down. We're getting hands in the dirt here and giving you what you want. And that is just from a fantasy perspective, lots of free agency talk out there, but no one's really digging into 
the fantasy implications of this. And so that's uh, people are, that's people are saying that they're, they're wondering yeah. like, you know, all, all we're getting is sort yeah. of, uh, you know, I Warren get it. Sharp. Shifter. Right. Yeah. It's like, it's like Warren Sharp tweeting about how the chargers have, have this terrible cap situation, but like, we just need, what we need is, is a guy whose best finish is 12th place in the puppy 67 yeah. to tell us how many fantasy points Antonio Gibson is going to score as a Patriot. Yeah, so hit that like button, subscribe. You know, we're on the road to 10K this year. It's going to happen. Uh, I, I do want to – you brought up Warren Sharp. I want to know, does he have, like, interns tweeting for him? Doing his tweets? I don't I don't think so. M- my, guess would be, my guess would be he actually writes and press send on his tweet but has people who help, like, workshop research. research. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, because this this did kind of um, – I was just like, okay, Warren Sharp, he's, you know, sharp football. But he posted this thing after the Titans signed Pollard, and it was the Titans faced the number three loaded bo- – the number three most loaded boxes last year versus loaded boxes last year behind a op- better offensive line. Pollard averaged just 3.6 yards per carry, 34% success. And it's just like, okay, <laughs> I wonder what has changed from last year to this year as far as loaded boxes are concerned. Like, there's a reason why they loaded boxes last year. Yes, there might be some. I mean, uh, that that's kind of uh, people who object to Warren's work. I'm not saying I am one of them, but if the, the criticism of Warren's work is that he is definitely a fan of finding a statistic and using it as a nugget uh, it, it will just irrespective of the context in which those numbers are generated. Yeah. Right? Overfitting and, and, small sample sizes to point to a trend yeah. that probably doesn't exist. That would be, that would be the criticism, not saying I am levying that criticism, but just saying that is the criticism that people. I love he, just how PC you are right now, Davis. Well, yeah, Warren, Warren is, see about this. Warren is, um, what what he is, and honestly, I'm not saying I this. am, but if I was, uh, well, well, truly, I am jealous. Shows how much we all love Reeves. <laughs> Warren is Warren is the Rex Chapman of fantasy football. Warren, <laughs> Warren has perfected the ability to be like he is the viral account. That might be a slam. For, that might be a slam. I would trade places with Warren right now, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, you know. don't let your wife hear you talk about that, uh, like that. But Rex Chapman's like got in trouble for stealing people's tweet, like quote tweets and everything else. That's not what Warren does. So I no, would, Warren, I would Warren, Warren mostly does the original shit. But I mean, I mean, I don't know anything about Rex Chapman. I he, just want to know if you thought someone was running it, like a, I guess we could say a a, a war intern. Yeah, he definitely has like research people, like a hundred percent. Yeah. I think, I think he, like when I read his tweets and like, I've seen his clips and his shows and stuff before, like I read his tweets in his voice. Like it feels like our Warren. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, We're about to just. Warren is a sports grid partner, buddy. He comes on. He comes on. Oh, now. Oh, now. He comes on on Pharrell Coast to Coast every Thursday. Now we understand. Corporate Can we get a Davis, segment that's like Matic vs. Sharp debunking <laughs> overfitted trends? Well, we, we we I mean we we could. He he's been on the take cast too. War, Warren he's a you know he's a grind. The thing Warren is a grinder, like way more than I ever have been. Of course he but is. He, he's like he, uh, he likes engagement. Let's uh let's hear. We can we can we can put this as a clip though. So so if you if you want to make a, a mark, Tony Pollard. More fantasy points in 2024 as a member of the Tennessee Titans than Tajay Spears, and more fantasy points than he scored in 2023 as a shitty member of the shitty Dallas Cowboys. I, I think he, I think he's legit going to be good. Okay, let's save this for in a second because we're about to get into it, Davis. You, you kind of, kind of overstepped your bounds because uh, right sure. now we have to get into the Overzets overview. Got that dog in a butt. Got that dog in a butt. Over that, over you. Come on. The cast right now is like a paycheck at a shitty job. We show up every two weeks, but never amount to as much as you deserve. 
Uh, Mr. Tuttle 05 is once again abstaining from the show because he skimmed less free agency headlines than the rest of us. I mean, come on, Tuttle. If Kitchen gets to do zero prep for the show and still skirt by, you can as well. I'd like to imagine if Tuttle was here, he would like flow to take like Emmanuel Wilson is still the running back to own in Green Bay or something like that. <laughs> Uh, we miss you, uh, Tuttle. Uh, we do have lots of free agency fallout to get to uh, today. Um, let's wind way back. Um, after the Browns traded for a man Steve Smith once massacred on national television, Kitchen has vowed to increase his Deshaun Watson exposure this year from 96% to 100%. I did not. <laughs> One Deshaun Watson in every draft is Kitchen's motto this year. But the real win... For our very own David Kitchen came when the Titans swapped out Derrick Henry for a guy whose agent pays PFF absurd amounts of money, Tony <laughs> Pollard. Did you know Tony Pollard was PFF's number one graded running back from week 11 on? Uh, Kitchen promptly took to X.com where he spoke directly to Pollard in a post asking Tony if there's anything he can do to help this offseason. Uh, it got 14 likes which is honestly pretty decent <laughs> kitchen adjusted numbers. <laughs> but yes, David, there is something you can do, and that's grip Eric Decker's hand extra tight in the prayer circle this week and ask yeah. Tajay Spears to save you guys from your sins. Uh, t- Team Tajay Spears forever and always. Uh, in other news, I might have to take the L on Justin Fields. All right? I laughed at Davis. Two weeks ago when he said Fields might not be a starter next year. But look, in Davis fashion, I'm not going down without a fight. Let me workshop a take right now. Okay. Seriously, no one wants Justin Fields. It's not one team. It's almost suspiciously absent of interest. It feels awfully like the Lamar Jackson black ball. No! Wow! This is which means this is taking Fields is destined to win the MVP. How's that for a take right there? I mean, that right there, Peter, that was just like watching a master at work. I mean, that is, go. that is, um, he's being blackballed. Is, he's bla- Justin Fields, 10 and 28 as an NFL starter has been, has been blackballed. <laughs> yeah. Another, also a quarterback who's been accused of only being a running back. I mean, the parallels abound. Um, one of the most intriguing nuggets from free agency uh, was the Jets surrounding Aaron Rodgers with even more talent. And two wide receiver sets, Garrett Wilson will now be flanked by RFK Jr. That's a great one, too, (laughs) right up there with Tyreek and Waddle. I got it. And Rodgers, new running mate. Uh, Kirk Cousins is now the QB for the Falcons, so we're all going to go broke on Kyle Pitts again and have the time of our life doing so. Back to you, Dave. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Before I forget, Dave, can I I read a tweet that has had, that has just had, I mean, this tweet is my Roman Empire right now. Sure, yeah. All right, this is from Jason Moore of the Fantasy Footballers. Um, as of right now, it's got 3.2 million views on Twitter.com and over 700 uh, responses and quote tweets. If I'm the Bears, I draft Caleb Williams and put him on the bench. Go win a bunch of games with Justin Fields, which they would, which they would, to highlight his ability and let Williams get that valuable redshirt season. They then could get a valuable trade for Fields next off season i i have been unable to stop thinking about this tweet since i read it it's it's got the most i i mean it's like it's like suppositions on suppositions on suppositions it's 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 really it's this really is, incredible listen this is why jason does not need to be a gm um <laughs> love the guy love the guy like the but. the guy who's 10 and 28 as an nfl starter can't fetch a day two pick right now would then Turn everything around, win enough games to then justify getting the number one overall to to get whatever pick it would be for Justin Fields. Or it's just it's 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 incredible. Like Justin Fields has done like none, nothing, no evidence at the NFL level that this guy can be a winning quarterback. And and we're we're still doing it's incredible. That's I mean, Davis. We don't have to go down this road again because we've already talked about fields and there's so much more to talk about, but the guy's got talent. It's it's the most important He's, story it, in the NFL, though, what the Bears do with the number one overall pick in terms of both fantasy 
and 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 real whatever ends up happening because Caleb Williams is is a generational once every not generational once every five years level of quarterback prospect yeah. and people are saying that the Bears should not take him and they should keep this guy who gets sacked twelve percent of the time. We need a new term. What what is like a what's a fraction of a generation? Because the, <laughs> it's it's not even that I think people are misusing it. I just don't think there's a, a better word. There's not a good word. Summarize a guy who's like the best in the past three to four years. Yeah. It's like half half decade ish. Yeah, it just doesn't have a good ring to it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean a presidential I, I term level pre, pre, a prospect. presidential term that is that is really good yeah but what's yeah. uh what's four score how much is four score 80 years kitchen <laughs> is it isn't score 20 it is. four score i four, forgot four score, like i four score and seven what, years ago what yeah. is four score yeah four score is 20. 20 yeah 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 so half a score <laughs> Uh, fourth, that, a fourth of score, so, so. a fourth of a score prospect. Yeah, that rolls off the tongue. <laughs> so, so put up, put up these questions about Hollywood Brown uh, on the chat. I'll just go ahead and answer them real quick. So, Hollywood Brown's probably not going to be a chief because the Chiefs want their outside Smith. wide. No, the Chiefs want their outside wide receivers to be big so that they can block. They don't. They they prefer guys MBS, Justin Watson, Justin Ross. They don't. They don't like their perimeter guys to be smaller. Doesn't mean that if Hollywood Brown like has no market and is like, I'll do two years, seventeen and a half million dollars. Like if he signs like the the DeAndre Swift contract, but at running back, maybe they would do it. But I I think it's unlikely. All right. Can we? Let's just start. We'll get into running backs in a second, but just quarterbacks real quick guys that are on the up and up. Let's start with uh, out of Cleveland, Deshaun Watson. <laughs> That's where you want to start? It's like the yes. worst place to start. He's not How? on the up and up. Yeah, you lead with Kirk Cousins. He's on Deshaun Watson is on the down and down if anything. No. Like if I had to He's say He's got he now has Jerry Judy, Amari Cooper, and then hey, let's just throw in Elijah Moore in uh, three wide receiver sets. Do you know where got, Deshaun Watson is going in drafts right now? He's like QB 22. He's like, oh, the don't last tell place me that start. because I'm trying to stay out of the streets until after the draft. <laughs> if he's yeah, going sure QB really 22, he's going after Drake Bay and Aaron Rodgers and Matthew Stafford and Jaden Daniels. He's, go, he's going he's after Robert spot. Kennedy's Jr. vice president, man. People, <laughs> people, people steal. <laughs> okay, let's uh, then let's let's switch to. Bryce Young. Hey, God, Kitchen, let me unpack this yeah. one sec. You think that yeah. them just like making the most marginal of upgrades on Elijah Moore is going to turn Deshaun Watson into well, a Well, Elijah good Moore now is a big upgrade over like Cedric Tillman or David is Bell. He? Yeah. You saw it's, what Flacco it's, it's, did it's, last it's year buddy, with the team. It's, it's, Stefan <laughs> it's Stefanski, <laughs> though. They're still going to play mostly 12 personnel. They're still going to, not mostly, but a lot of 12 personnel. I will say I'll have a lot. Of, I'll have a lot of wants in this year. Uh, we know. We know. <laughs> All right, uh, Bryce Young though, because we do have to talk about. I got a good the guy I, who's going fifty picks after. Everybody's talking Ron about Watson. cousins. <laughs> Maybe I should have Dave, had JJ on this. On I actually. This. I, I want to talk have, real quick about. I have Bryce research Young. on this. I have okay. research on this. Um, because so, they spent so, a ton of money on offensive line. They did. They added uh, two guards for like a combined um, $105 million. Uh, they did. I did see that one of these two guards is the shortest starting guard in the NFL so that at least Bryce Young can see over them. They also traded a late round pick and a cornerback for Deontay Johnson. Now I will give you guys some information. I'm going to have you guess. So in the entire history of the NFL, since they started tracking targets, which I believe is um, 1986, there are 164 players who played a minimum of five seasons at wide receiver and had registered 600 or more targets, right? So 164 players, 600 targets. Okay. All right. Of those players, yeah. where do you think Deontay Johnson ranks in terms of yards per target? 
since they started tracking since the they year started tracking I was born. targets yeah i'll say bottom 1% peter i'll say uh 36th to last place 158th out of 164 158 out of 164 nfl history with 600 targets or more there's only been 164 players with 600 targets or more I mean, maybe I maybe I didn't expand this search on stat head correctly. <laughs> oh, I can run it again. Here, I'll, I'll run it again. Like, that doesn't seem like a lot for a multi-decade. A couple scores, if you a will. Scores. <laughs> Two scores. <laughs> All right. Um, no, I'm pretty sure this is right. Okay. I'm not saying you're wrong. It just seems shocking to me that there would only be 164 wide receivers who have crested that number. Well, you had to have played. So you had to have played the five. No, this is this is right. I, I can post the I can post the link in the chat. This is right. And you're saying targets? Yes. So you, I mean, how many guys in the NFL get to 600 targets? That's a lot of targets. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I mean, here I will. <laughs> here I, it's I, also someone, crazy because Deontay Johnson's only 27. It's not like he's been in the league. Forever. He's been in the league for five Here, years. Peter, I just posted the stat head link in our private chat. It won't let me put it in the actual chat. Check check my work. All right. If you We've guys got... if you guys are in if you guys are in the Deposit Kingdom Discord, I will post the I'll post the stat head link in the Swolecast channel. Subscribe to Stat Head Football for full results. Get your first month free. <laughs> I'm I, I'm very certain I did this correctly. I believe okay. you. I'm just I'm more stunned. I'm stunned. All right. I'm glad we went um, on that journey. Yes, yes, that was worth it. You got Thielen, Deontay Johnson, and now Jonathan Mingo. Uh, and a better offensive line. Who's stopping line. this team? Who's stopping a team of Jonathan Mingo, Adam Thielen, Deontay Johnson, and Miles Sanders? With they have the, a better with trio all week. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you guys don't like Bryce Young this year. We just don't know. You know, we, we really, we really just don't know, Dave. You like oh, Bryce, Young, Bryce Young could be this year's CJ Stroud. People are saying <laughs> we're trying to, we're trying to maintain viewers <laughs> at the 20 minute mark. And Davis is like listing off archaic stats and kitchen wants to talk about the guy going off the board, the 205th guy going off the board at underdog drafts right now, Bryce Young. <laughs> this is what people want. How about we I talk mean, fine. Derek Henry, Josh about, Jacobs, Aaron Jones. Let's talk Joe about Mixon. Kirk Cousins. Let's talk about Kirk Cousins. What do you guys like about Kirk Cousins? <laughs> Who's stopping this trio? Drake London, Kyle Pitts, Bijan Robinson. R rumor on the street is Drake London sneaking his way into the back end of second round of some drafts, and I can't even really complain with it that much. What if... This is Karain's line that I'm stealing from him. What if Drake <laughs> London is just Michael Pittman Jr. with a better publicist? Well, then he would also have had to have been a much better prospect, gone way earlier in the NFL draft, and done way more with a worse quarterback situation. Suck it, Karain. Yeah, I I am I think Drake London is probably very good. I don't think he's like a one-two turn um top 20 wide receiver style pick like marvin harrison jr at the arizona cardinals or drake london with kirk cousins what do you think well that that's my whole thing it's more that it's such a flat tier like dj moore goes off you mentioned marvin harrison then you're looking at Devonte adams a couple of great san francisco wide receivers in which case there's a clear <laughs> winner rashi rice Diggs, olave like london belongs in that in that company at the at the two three turn yeah um, what are your thoughts on Debo Samuel changing his number to number one? What are your, it's, what, what, it's I feel compensation like, for being the number two wide receiver on the Niners. <laughs> I feel like, I, I feel like Debo, I feel like Debo changing his number to number one might actually be what's needed to ascend him to the number one player in fantasy football. Cause it, <laughs> it adds, it adds about 5% of efficiency to you as we saw with Jarek McKinnon. Put your money where your mouth is and start taking him ahead of CMC in drafts, Davis. I'm taking him ahead of Marvin Harrison in drafts on, on underdog.com. That's right. and, and yeah. Last before we go to running back Russ on the Steelers teams. country. Let's weld. I don't know how kitchen did it first. He managed 
to come up with a guy going later than Deshaun Watson. So he said, hold my I'm beer. just going running back. Hang I'm on. going quarterbacks before we go Bryce running back. And then he said, can I find a conversation <laughs> topic surrounding a quarterback who's going even later than Bryce Young? And he gave us Russell Wilson. I think Russ still has something in the tank. You didn't, Dave. You skipped. You skipped over Darnold, buddy. What about yeah. Darnold? I thought. I thought maybe if we, we'd go from Deshaun Watson to can Sam Darnold um, lead the Minnesota Vikings to a playoff spot in the weak NFC? You know, Is I thought that would kind of, that would kind of be on brand. I don't know. What do you think the Vikings are gonna do? They what do you think their plan someone, is? Right? They can't. They can't roll with Darnold. So they pick at 11, so they definitely are not getting a quarterback at 11. I mean, best best case scenario at 11 is your your if you don't trade is is Penix or Knicks. So then you have to ask yourself, what is it worth to trade up to 6 probably? And maybe not even. 6 might not even get it done for JJ McCarthy. You you really might not be able to do it. Like people are so horny for this guy. I don't I personally don't get it, but people do love there are lots of quarterbacks in this draft. I just I think they they'll go and get now. He still could start over one of these rookies, but um, yeah, that's wild. All right, let's get to running backs. Let's play a game. Love it. Amazing. We, I thought the stream yeah. ended for a sec. I love it. <laughs> so, so just. I, I mean, I love it. I love it. Uh, so, so with the transitions. Okay, let's let's play a game where we close our eyes and we okay. just list off running backs on new teams. <laughs> Sick game, dude. Sick. Okay. I don't like it. Right. But everyone has to close okay. their eyes. Okay. okay. Your right. eyes are closed. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll start. Saquon Barkley. What team does he play for now? Eagles. DeAndre Swift is is a bear. Uh, Derek Her- uh, Henry plays for the Baltimore Ravens. Austin Tony Eckler Pollard is a commander. The- hey, let's go. No, I- We're going to order. Tony Pollard plays for the Titans. <laughs> Eckler is a commander. Uh, Devin Singletary plays for the Giants. Uh, Joe Mixon plays for the Texans. Antonio Gibson is a Patriot. Gus Edwards plays for the Chargers. Aaron Jones plays for the Vikings. Alexander Madison doesn't play for anybody. No. Uh, yeah. Davis is it. Can't. Davis lost. Oh, wow. I just wanted I just wanted to dig at top fifty draft pick, uh, Alexander Madison. I'll I'll be honest, right. I didn't have another one in the holster there. Yeah, I didn't either, really. I think that was most of them, right? Okay, so... Naheem, Naheem Hines calls himself the Nightmare, spelled N-Y-G-H-T, and he is now a Cleveland Brown. <laughs> okay. Do we, miss, do we what, mention Josh what Jacobs? what we wanted Duke Johnson to be on the Browns. Do we Josh mention Jacobs? who, David? Yeah. Josh Jacobs. Yeah. Zach Moss to the Bengals. Oh, Moss was the one we forgot. Yeah, I gotta. I I I'm a I'm alone on fading Zach Moss Island. Everyone everyone remembers no. the two. Everyone I'm remembers you, the two games. He was really good for two games last year for the Colts, um, and then really stunk ass the back half of the season. He's getting paid eight million dollars two years. It's like nothing. He was like a classic fresh legs thing, and then yeah. did not have the juice uh, after that. I don't. I don't believe he's got. He's got no seasons with over two hundred touches in in the NFL. I believe he'll be annoying because he'll get goal line work, but I don't think he's going to be a smash. He's going to be like a okay. poor man's Gus Edwards, right? Yeah. Saquon. Yeah. I've heard of to him. to the Eagles. What are your thoughts on on Saquon to the Eagles, Davis? I mean, I think that the market is going to price him higher than I'm willing to go of like an older running back changing teams where the targets probably aren't going to be there. There's a real question about what happens with goal line stuff. You know, I've gone back and forth on this. Like, 
oh, Kelsey is the secret to the tush push. You don't want Jalen Hurts to get tackled. He was clearly playing with this knee injury that he got from doing all the running last year. So maybe as an organization, you say, we're going to give Saquon this money and give him the goal line stuff. But at the end of the day, you would be replacing the most efficient play in football with a handoff, one of the least efficient plays in football. Like, I, I just think ultimately he ends up being too expensive for what I think the bottom end of his his range of outcomes is. Pete? Yeah, I, I was fading him at ADP 23. Now he's already five picks higher. He's going to flip Jonathan Taylor probably in the next 24 hours, and then he's probably going to dance with Kyron at the one-two turn for a while, and that's just – it's too much uh, for me. I mean, the thing too is like – I think people are painting the rosiest thing of like, we're not dropping Barkley into the Eagles team two years ago that went to the Super Bowl. I mean, this team looked absolutely awful. Then they lose well, their the second half of the center. season. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the part that, you know, matters as we're projecting out for next year, then they lose a ton of talent. Um, I, I don't know. It doesn't like, I think he's going to be comparable to what he was last year in a slightly better situation but i don't know if that warrants a one-two turn pick he um, feels to me like shouldn't he be going like I, i'm pretty excited about josh jacobs in green bay with no competition he's like a fourth round pick right now i mean i don't even think it's close cost adjusted who i'd want between those two yeah i think that's right what about tony pollard where's he going right now pick 78 he's uh just years now. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. No, Dave, I'm I I it's it's absolutely sickening to me, but I'm with you. Seventh round for Pollard? Yeah. He's gonna be he's gonna be going up to like fifth round by the time I get around to drafting, I bet. This it was oh. it was like the only place he could have gone that would have made me be back in on him at 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 cost. Like it's it's the only team he could have gone to. How the only are you guys the only argument you can sell me on with Pollard is that it was all health related. Is that the argument? That's a big no. argument, Peter. That's the only Try argument going there out is. there and running. And even um, I think I was listening to Pollard on uh, Denny and Pat's Roto World show, the Super Bowl edition, and he was just talking mm -hmm. about how much better he felt towards the end of. Um, of the season like it, it it takes a little while sometimes and we've seen that so yeah yeah we're gonna be living a little on pollard this year for sure he's but, he's fine at that price but i'm he he's going up he's the one thing i do pollard. not understand is the whole tajay spears thing like i don't i don't know if you guys know it but he does not have an acl uh in one of his knees and so I mean, how, how many guys maybe this last is... year when he was taking screen passes 80 yards to the house? But this is what I'm how saying. Many... Maybe maybe they just don't trust him as like a feature back that's going to get like a ton of work. I, I don't know. Like that, it perplexed me why they would sign Pollard when they have Tajay Spears, which is like see, a similar see, running In back. that, I, I was never assuming in the market. If the market was assuming Tajay Spears was going to be a feature back, he would have been going at like pick 35. Uh, or yeah. like where Gibbs was going last year. But that's yeah. not the case. He was priced like they were going to add someone, and he got the best case. They added one of the dustiest dudes instead of spending a draft pick on a, a, a talented rookie um, who has fresh legs. Oh. Like This was best case scenario for Spears. There's no talented rookies in this running back class. Yes, there is. Getting... Yeah. yeah, there's one. <laughs> do, you know, do you know who the one is, Dave? Here we go. Uh, uh, I don't. Do you know he's only 19 years old? He's the same age as Jason Tatum. Oh. <laughs> this Braylon is uh, Allen. Kitchen yeah. can't even name two running backs in this class. No, yeah. I know but Braylon he's... Allen's a guy you talked about last World Cast. You talked about him in the Correct. chat. Okay, here's the deal with Pollard and Spears. How, Peter, in your lifetime, how many third round? 200 pound running backs have flashed over six games in the back half of the season and then we literally never heard of them again like just this is, just how many no but the whole point is people like everyone views running backs through this binary lens like are you a guy who can be a bell cow back and get 20 plus carries or not and like none of those backfields are like that anymore he's priced in a range where committee backs go like th there's nothing wrong with his price nothing has changed 
this price baked in a free agent signing. And I would argue he would have dropped more if they added a dustier guy. What if they, or what a better if, guy. I, I actually agree with the chat that Spears is probably like the better quote unquote player, but just like in the Bears backfield, I mean DeAndre Swift and Tony Pollard got the same money. Yeah. I mean, that is that is what like those guys got signed to that money to get 60% of the work in in that backfield. And yeah, I mean, you, you are gonna get more five for 75 games from Tajay, but you're gonna get 18 for 52 and a 60% chance of a touchdown every week from Pollard. How about this for a conversation? Who has more touches? Tony Pollard. In 2024, Derrick Henry in 2023. Henry. One of them, by the way, led the league in in attempts. Henry in 2023. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Like there is going to be more work available for Tajay as a year two running back with less competition. Yeah. And I mean, we'll see if they can also a new scheme draft. Yeah. It's also a new scheme as well. Like there, you don't have the same, you got, uh, you know, a more offensive minded coach. Well, uh, and how about this? Like our other poster boy that we all love, like what's the difference between selecting Tajay Spears at pick 80 and Jalen Warren at pick 90. When you think about yeah. like what their projection for actual touches is and what's in their way. Uh, I think that's I mean, not much. Bad. Yeah. We know like Brian Callahan is the new Titans head coach. And for those not like up to speed, he is coming from Cincinnati where he was offensive coordinator there. We saw what he did with Joe Mixon. That's that's the only thing like I can't really shake as far as like not the split carries. Like I, I think that Pollard is going to have a big bulk of the load. Uh, Do you think they're going to use him in the passing game? Yes. Yeah, yes. that's what I'm down I for. Mean, uh, but I, I think he's going to have more. Uh, I think if he's going in the seventh round, I think he's going to have more work than – than what people are are assuming all right um let's let's talk about speaking of joe mixon let's talk about the texans davis if i was to pull a matic and cheer for another team that i thought was like kind of on the on the up and up it would probably be this texans team they just seem like they are loaded right now well joe mixon's a really good guy so it definitely would be sort of <laughs> you know you you just kind of you just kind of <laughs> follow the, the the good guys in the NFL around. I mean, yeah. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you switched to the Chiefs Kingdom when it was Tyreek Hill and Kareem Hunt. So, uh, you know, maybe save those. I changed. I I did those. it because of Mahomes, man. But yes, you're right. I mean, the Chiefs have shitty guys on the Frank Clark, bad person. Tyreek, not a good guy. That that's that is a that is a totally fair criticism. Actually, the Frank Clark trade just like. That was that was like that was yeah. a bad moment as a as a Chiefs fan. But here's my thing with um the the up and up Texans, and they did make a, a pretty big move yesterday. You know, talking about defensive players here on the program, they acquired Danielle <laughs> yeah. Hunter. The which I mean, obviously, this is not this is not my point, but smarter people on on Twitter are making this point, which is the Texans actually are good enough right now with C.J. Stroud. I mean, they won a playoff game um, last year to be like we have this quarterback on the rookie deal. Like we actually got to be making moves to go for it right now. Like we got to be acquiring veterans. We got to be doing stuff. So the the Joe Mixon transaction, the Daniel Hunter transaction makes a ton of sense. I'm actually surprised that they didn't try and make a different move at tight end. I'm surprised they ran back the Dalton Schultz thing. Just, I, I mean, they are going to run into the same problem that the bills have run into that the Bengals have run into, which is, being a contender in the AFC is just not the same as being a contender in the NFC. It's so much easier to be a contender in um, the NFC. I, I just like, I, it feels like a very tall mountain for them to climb. You and I don't even know what you do about it. Really? You say that, um, but like the chiefs have done it. I mean, that it's, it's obviously that's the point that I'm making, which is that you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, the king, the king exists on one half of the bracket and not the other half of the bracket. So you would prefer you would prefer to be on the kingless side of the bracket. Not that there's anything the Texans can do about it. Just gotcha. I would caution. I would caution anyone. I would say if anyone wanted to be a bandwagon fan right now, the team that they should hop yeah. on would be the Bears. The Bears are the team that is set up no. to yes Davis. No, yeah, this is gross. 
Bears over Packers? <clears throat> oh, no, Packers. Again? You're right. You're right. You're right. Packers way better. Yeah. Bears are interesting. I still – I wish they would have blown it up and gotten a new coach. Like, it would have – That's yeah, that's the issue. That yeah. could have made it fun. Like, if they would have gotten, you know, Mike McDonald or something like that, this really savvy young – coach instead of the retreat it it is going to be so funny when they win five games with caleb and they have to fire the coaching staff again and then they have to they have to they have to do it's just it'll be like yeah it is i mean the old the reason that ever or ever blue still being the coach is the only reason why there's any talk about fields at all it, it makes no sense yeah i mean he i do think I do think the Texans are a, a sexy uh, bandwagon team. Like if you if you think if you had an impressionable child who was getting into the NFL right now, and you lived in a state where there wasn't already a team, like I could see them loving C.J. Stroud in the Texans. Yeah. Stroud, Is Stroud, Mixon, and then uh, Mixon's Nico. not who I'm hanging my hat there. I'm going. Tay. <laughs> well, I'm just listing. I'm listing their team. Nico, the order? he's like the sixth Nico guy. Nico and Tank. Does. I'm going down the depth chart, Peter. Let's go in order of importance to the team. Okay. David, uh, David, Larry, David, Larry David. Larry Tunzel, uh, CJ Stroud. How am I going to explain that bong mask to my new Texans fan? <laughs> yeah, yeah. David, name name a Texans defensive player, not Daniel Hunter, who I just told you. Danico Autry, the guy who just signed from the Titans, who's going to be okay, a big – name, I mean, na Okay, yeah. name, a guy, name a guy who's not a Titan or was has never been a Titan. Aziz El Shirier is also a, was a Titan last year. Um, okay. All right. Yeah. Who's got to, who's got who's got the 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 run stopper that uh, that the Titans cut because he was such a dick. Will Anderson. Uh, he actually went to the uh, Texans, but I'm not sure he's going to be playing. He might have been cut. Yeah, Stingley. Sure. He's on the Texans. Tear Tart. I, I thought. I just can't yeah. get over you being obsessed with Deshaun Watson and Joe Mixon. It's just so it's it's, it, it's yeah, it's, it's weird. not I'm not obsessed with Joe Mixon at all. I'm just I saying I believe in second chances. What can I say? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Grace is a powerful thing. I'm not <laughs> saying that though, as far as <laughs> Joe Mixon. I'm just saying that it's a a situation where he is he's going to be like thrown into from a another good offense to a another good offense or what from one good offense to another good offense yeah i think from that environment standpoint it's a pretty lateral move but i mean getting a seventh round pick back tells you about all you need to know about how the the Bengals value him yeah I mean, running backs don't matter that's the thing all right saving the best for possibly last derrick henry on the ravens is gonna be fun right to is. see to see them to see Lamar I, I, and Derrick I've Henry. I've got a I've got a small fear yes. of this being oh. Emmett Smith being an Arizona Cardinal, Hakeem Olajuwon being a Toronto Raptor. You know, there, there definitely is a I mean, he's 30 years old. He's had the foot injury twice. I, I, I think there there's a little bit more downside risk than than we are pricing in at this at this time. He didn't – I mean, there's not a big price on him right now, right? Yeah, he's like a fourth-round pick. Um, or le later than that, he's a fifth-round pick right now. I mean, he has to move up. 54.7. Yes. He's got to move up at least a round. Um, I, I think he'll be a third. He'll be a third-round pick. I, I agree. I think he'll be like a mid to late third when we settle. Because it's not hard to be like, what, Gus Edwards – who can't do anything scored 13 touchdowns in this offense last year 15 uh, oh 13 rushing uh i think yeah. he had a couple of passing and then you got jk Dobbins. we still don't know what the hell's happening with him free agent keaton mitchell coming back from a severe injury this offense is going to be good and derrick henry was actually pretty good last year from like evaded tackles broken tackles all of that stuff at 29 reach so I, I don't – it's hard for me to pull pour cold water on this ADP. Like, we can start having that conversation if he, you know, goes parabolic into the second round or whatever, but seems fine. And here's here's the fun thing about some of these teams is that, like, we still have so many good wide receivers out there that uh, could just – it could be really fun. 
I'm looking you mean forward in the draft? to. Yeah. 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 Definitely not. I think Ridley might be the only like wide receiver not signed, and he just might resign with the Jags. Uh, the the rumor is he's going to the Patriots, which would just be so funny. I think if he was going to the Patriots, it already would have been done. What? He he's going back to the Jags and saving them a round of a draft pick. Mm. Boots on the ground. Why? What are the Patriots doing? Just vibes, dude. <laughs> Just vibes, brother. Peter. And well, it seems like they're getting Drake May at this point, right? Is that what you guys like with the Mariota signing? Doesn't that feel like we want a quasi running quarterback to back up? If if Jaden Daniels. Daniels goes ahead of Drake May, I just am gonna like so many of my priors and thoughts about Wait, what I thought means Mariota to be. signed with the the, the commies, commanders. the commanders, yes. meaning he would be a better fit to back up Daniels than oh, May, right? Right, which which would, would fly, indicate May could fly slide. I hate it. I I like actually hate it. I I, I think it's so stupid. I'm you, with you. you have I, to. Yeah. You have to watch Drake May for about 47 seconds to be like, I see exactly how this guy wins a Super Bowl. Like, just exactly how it works. And it's not New England. <laughs> it's not New England. No, it's about the last place. Whereas, you watch Jaden Daniels, you watch Jaden Daniels, and you're like, oh, I know how this works in New England. Like, like you just completely get it. It's it's Cam Newton, but good. Like, exactly, like, yeah. Not, yeah. So, I... But, yeah, I mean, the Patriots... They they absolutely have to draft a wide receiver. They and they what they should really do. It would be the greatest national television. What if the Patriots? They just said they pulled up random.org and they put the top <laughs> five best wide receivers available based by like aggregated mock draft data, and they just spun the wheel. And whichever one popped up in the second round, they selected that wide receiver. Uh, it would be incredible television. It would be better than whatever they would do on their own. You know they're just itching to draft some wide receiver we've never heard of in the second round. <laughs> they're taking they're the team, they're the team that takes Ricky Pearsall ahead of like Devontae Walker. Like that, that's how it goes. Yeah. No, that would be the most Patriots thing. They like trade back, take Joe Alt, pick up like a late first and use that to overdraft Ricky Pearsall. <laughs> that's that's no. if Belichick was still in the building. Okay. The the most the most who's the quarterback eight in this class? Who who's after who's after Rattler? Dude, you're you're beyond my pay grade okay. at this point. After after Rat Michael Pratt. So they end up they end up taking Michael Pratt out of Tulane in the Save. third round, and that's who that's who starts that's who starts for them. Oh. Like they they skip they skip Knicks, they skip Penix, and they do Michael Pratt. AJT says Xavier Leggett to the pass in the second. Have yes. have you guys Great have, Patriots? Have, have have you guys heard Xavier Leggett give an interview? No. No. What's oh. he like? Oh, it's amazing. Um is he a dog? I'm gonna, I'm gonna post this in the chat, uh so so if you can pull it up. It uh he seems like he I don't know if New England would be his uh his destination it seems like he would be a a titan wide receivers sosa are you there can you pull it up have you, you see seen Traylon? have you seen Traylon around no <laughs> oh my god i'm listening to it okay That's great. all right play it see what would you say are the best parts of your game that help you get into the end zone so often Oh, man, I say the deep ball, man. But uh, I really feel like any way that I get the ball in my hand, I could get it to that end zone. Yeah, he's Whether a Whether you're taking a pitch That's or a catching a short pass. Or... How, did, I mean, how did he not end up at Georgia? How did he end up at South Carolina? I mean, South Carolina is pretty Georgia. close to Georgia. <laughs> <You can't laughs> when when I think of that much of a Southern accent, I, I think you gotta be you got to be Georgia. I, I don't think South Carolina is south enough for that. Yeah, someone said next Randy Moss. That actually could be a thing. Randy Moss also uh, sure. very country. Um, all right, we want to wrap this puppy up. <laughs> you got anything else you want to talk about? You looking to get out of here, kitchen? You got a hard out? <laughs> no, I mean spring break over here. <laughs> yeah, uh, we got plenty. You... We we haven't even talked. We haven't. There's plenty of stuff we haven't talked about. Dude. Like what? Kitchen, what's like, your what take we... on? Gabriel Davis on the Jags. Gabe Davis to the Jags. I mean, I don't, I don't really have a take other than like I'm glad the Titans didn't sign him. Like, 
I'm glad my team did not sign Gabe Davis. I'm sure he'll be fine, but it's just he he wasn't going to be worth whatever someone was going to pay for him. Let me ask you this, Davis. I saw some like some real time fist pumping about Darnell Mooney to Atlanta. It's like to okay, Falcons, yeah. You like Kate or to the Falcons? Isn't it just KJ Osborne? Like two what, with Kirk. What was the what was the fist pumping? Falcons? Yeah, like he's gonna this? have a breakout year. He's finally has a quarterback. All this kind of stuff. Like he's Did now he have a, a breakout a year three player. years ago or two years ago. Yeah, that's the thing is people are enamored with Darnell Mooney from that one season in Chicago where there was no one else on the team. Twenty twenty one. It, it was the the Fields Dalton year where he had like that 19 remember he had like that 19 target game on thanksgiving but his his teammates were alan robinson marquise goodwin demir bird jibby graham uh jakeem grant and daz newsome like there was there was absolutely no one on the team he registered 140 targets with a, a deontay jo- actually i was about to say deontay johnson-esque but 7.5 yards per target is like what deontay johnson that uh, like aspires to be I, I think Mooney is is probably fine. People were people wanted him to play for the Chiefs. People were hoping that he would sign with the Chiefs, and uh, I, I was not interested in that. I mean, that just felt like a Valdez scaling um, redo, especially with with if you're going to sign a skinny guy, you you'd much rather it be you'd much rather be Hollywood Brown. But the the Falcons needed something because the the Falcons wide receiver depth chart behind no, bad. Drake London. It was like it was like you can't go into a season with Josh Ali, uh Austin Mack and Chris Blair as your as your wide receivers. Like it was it was just such a mess. Yeah. They'll I mean, there are a lot of teams out there that are going to be targeting wide receivers. They, they're probably one of them cuz breaking that's... breaking news, wide receiver is a position of need in the National Football League. The game Davis right, thing ends. is really weird, though. It makes like no sense. It's for the Jazz. They also they also sign Mac Jones as a backup. Like, yeah, I don't know. Like as like a rental, right? With how his contract isn't it a one year rental kind of thing? Uh, yeah, yeah. For Dave, a six what did round you? Pick. What did you? Uh, I mean, look. What did you? What did you make a, a Mac Jones to to the Jaguars? You think there's a QB competition there, or uh, what are no. you? What are you thinking? No, I think it's the end of Mac Jones. Is what I think. All right. It here's is. a question: Who has a better chance to be starting Week One? Sam Darnold or Gardner Minshew? Minshew. Gardner Minshew. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't well, he like fighting with Aiden O'Connell, unless they draft a quarterback, I guess. Unless unless Justin Fields reunites with Luke Getzey. Oh. That's the that's the new rumor. The new rumor. Because if you start to play music, we're we're playing musical chairs at quarterback right now, and the number of chairs for Justin Fields to sit down in is kind of down to like the Seahawks and the Raiders right now is, is really is Which is really what happened to Lamar Jackson. All the chairs were removed <laughs> until he just had to go back to Baltimore. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, really, it's so crazy to say it, but Justin Fields is having the Trey Lance experience from last off season where, where they're just, everyone's it's all over. Uh, Chris Diaz asking the chat. Do I think Curtis Samuel to Kansas city rumors are realistic? Yeah. I, I expect that to be the move. He's favorite. fast. Yeah. Yeah. He's I expect, really I expect that probably to be the guy that they signed. And I think they want, A.D. Mitchell at 32. I don't know if they'll get A.D. Mitchell at 32. They might have to trade up, um, or they might have to take Troy Franklin. I don't think they like Troy Franklin, again, going to the the too skinny thing. They might be a team that overdrafts Xavier Leggett. They might out-Patriots the Patriots. Uh, with, Can we with get the next player athlete podcast? You get Xavier Leggett in his deep southern drawl with Patrick uh, Kermit Mahomes. Imagine, I mean, <laughs> imagine those two guys talking to experience. each other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we didn't talk about Austin Eckler, I guess. Like, yeah, cheap contract. Yeah, man. He, I think he's like, he got, he just got, he, he was such a victim of poor timing. Like every time his contract went up, it just was coming at a, it was coming at a bad time for either the Chargers cap or like whatever. The holdout didn't work all that well. Yeah, it's just, it's a bummer because obviously he's a, a great dude. You know, he does the show with um with Harmon, one our friend Pat Crane. Two million dollars, like he he's he's an awesome guy, and I feel feel bad for him that he's not going to maximize, um, you know, value extraction from his time in the NFL. Hey, he's got 
fantasy though after his career is over. He's got some uh, fantasy chops. Sure. The, yeah. For for fantasy football this year, it's like a lose lose for both him and Brian Robinson, right? Because Brian Robinson lose some of those screen passes and checkdowns that he was stealing from Antonio Gibson because the coaching staff never liked him. Like Eckler is going to get on the field. Like he's going to be used on third downs. So I think it caps like Brian Robinson's true upside. And then Eckler is, I mean, I'm sure he'll get a couple goal line carries just the way they'll leave him on the field at times, but he's going to be competing with Brian Robinson in a way that I think, I don't know, but like, if you think about it from a zero RB thing, almost like some of the old Seahawks stuff or whatever, they're both going to have really nice contingent value if the other gets hurt because the coach will trust whichever one's left standing to kind of just be the lead back. You know, it's not like you're going to get some rando coming in there. Sorry, Chris Rodriguez, you know, stealing a huge chunk if one of those guys goes down. I think you'll see like a near bell cow. So I think that's kind of intriguing. Yeah, All right, I think, I think uh, so. The, I, I did want to say one thing about Robinson just weirdly. he I believe he was fourth best in the NFL in yards per route run at running back, which is just so funny thinking about the style the of Sam Howell experience. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's end on this. You have Janu Smith going to Miami. Totally. Which means I think Atlanta signed some rando tight end, uh, not fantasy relevant, which means they Kyle already Pitts. did. Charlie Werner. That's what I'm saying. That's the guy. I couldn't think of his name, but you've got Kyle Pitts now with Kirk Cousins with a new offensive coordinator. Where's, where's Pitts going? He's the eighth tight end right now. It's right about 85th overall. He's up to seven. He flipped Bowers. Yeah, there you go. He's going ahead of Brock Bowers now. So kind of similar to where he was going last year. Yes. Yeah. Uh, As as Chris Diaz says in the chat, we are so fucking back. (laughs) We are so we're back like we're back like we never left. Here's my thing at that ADP. I I, I think you still got to take George Kittle ahead of him. We know George Kittle is actually very good. Do you? I I I don't know if you do, man. Well, all right. Let, let's not. I guess that's, it depends that on the, how you're playing. That was the first part to the take. The second part of the take is it's batshit crazy to take Dalton Kincaid ahead of Kyle Pitts. Oh, that's Dal- the first part of the take. Yeah, I mean, Dal- what has Dalton Kincaid ever done, brother? <laughs> Dalton Kincaid Dalton got on Kincaid, the bad end of a timeshare with uh, Dawson Knox, and and there was maybe a chance Knox was going to get cut this off season. Instead, he renegotiated to stay on a smaller deal. So, like, it's it. I mean. Are, I, I might be ready to call Jover already on, on the, the Dalton Kincaid tight end one experience. If like, you want to draft a tight end in a timeshare, just take Cole Komet 10 rounds later. If you want to draft a tight end in a timeshare, <laughs> take Tucker Craft at tight end 28. I mean, yeah. it, what is – Tucker Craft – okay, this is a good Cole one. Cole Komet's with Dal- uh, Gerald Everett now? Chess Liam is typing. <laughs> 90, <laughs> 91 targets, 91 targets – for Kincaid last year. Now be fair to him, 7.4 yards per target. Luke Musgrave last season, 46 targets, but ended up with almost eight yards per target. Like it's just, I don't know. I did like, I'll take Kincaid a little bit here and there just because structurally he falls in, in a nice part of the draft in terms of the big board stuff, but there's no chance we get to August and he's going tight end five, right? Like actually no chance he's going tight end five in August. I think he should be in that Evan Ingram Njoku tier. Yeah. Because they're going right. to draft a wide receiver and their projections are going to look so different. Once once yep. Keon Coleman or whoever is a bill, it's all going to look so much different. Okay. Final thoughts. Thanks. Where is where is Traylon Burks? What what is what's he what's he what's his offseason routine? Because we've gotten, you know, we've gotten the Rashad Bateman um, you know, false flag pump. We're, we're, we're pretty soon, you know, we're going to start getting all this I stuff. I think Traylon's, I think Traylon's, they're going to draft a wide receiver or they're going to trade for T Higgins. I think Traylon's in wide receiver three territory. Yeah. Um, my, my true final thought is show me in the constitution where it says the quarterback of the New York Jets can't be the vice president. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good, David. All right, Peter. 
Uh, yeah, I was uh, got set up on stathead.com with a new account and uh, <laughs> just discovered that Deontay Johnson is, in fact, the worst wide receiver since 1913 when Don <laughs> Hudson was credited as the first star split end in NFL history and considered by many to be the first modern receiver. Uh, yeah, tough scenes for Deontay Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> goes back right. four score and a couple more <laughs> more than four score <laughs> five score even okay well uh I, I mean i think this was a fun show shout out to sosa for producing uh lots of topics we really covered it all um had a little game a little running back game which uh davis unfortunately lost but um good show <laughs> And in two weeks, we're going to be back with another good show. So uh, make sure you give us your take in the comment section, like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in a few weeks. It's been fun. And we're, and we're going to do it again. March 27th, we'll be back. <laughs> Put it in your calendar. Later. <laughs> Peace. Peace.